Daniel Khalif may have not got further than Chiswick after escaping jail, but GB News' Martin Daubeny couldn't even get to the end of his auto queue. First, it's the news headlines. No, it's not. We're going straight to me. This is breaking news. It's fast happening. Because as we just said, um, we, we, the, the the terror man... <laughs> this has gone wrong. <laughs> it's here. Chip Chapman, uh, we have him coming up soon on the arrest of the terror suspect. He, has, he escaped from Wandsworth Prison and he's been apprehended. It's all coming up in GB News. We've got our first guest. Here it is. Police have escaped, have arrested <laughs> prisoner Daniel <laughs> Khalif. Beg your pardon, we're getting the autocue in the right place. This story is just happening. Joining me now for the latest is GB News Home Security Editor Mark White. Are you there, Mark? It's Chip Chapman. We have Chip Chapman, Army um, for the Army Anger, former head of counterterrorism, Major General Chip Chapman. Chip, dramatic breaking news. This is breaking news. It's fast happening. Uh, Ash, how would you feel if that's how you broke the news of the terror man um, being, <laughs> <laughs> being arrested? Um, I mean, look, first of all, reading from an auto cue can be really hard. And I've had those moments where it's like I'm illiterate all of a sudden. I think it just went on for so long. It was like, <laughs> you know, when you trip and you fall up the stairs and then suddenly like every step you take after that is just like, uh, uh, fast happening terror man. We've got the escape man, Chit Chapman. Let's go. I mean, I don't know. Did you, was there a part of you which was like, Yes, this is very funny, but there, but for the grace of God, go I. Well, to be fair, I mean, it was, I'm, you know, my, my intro was somewhat tongue in cheek because I presume what was going on there is that what was on the auto queue was slightly wrong. You know, it's breaking news. So sometimes when it's breaking news, I mean, we don't really do breaking news on this show. So, you know, as you say, there, by, there, but by the grace of God. But I presume what you're supposed to do is, you know, you get it in your ear, you've got it on a bit of paper, and then you sort of say, this has happened. They'll give you a couple of sentences, but. Clearly, what what was on his auto cue was wrong, and then he tried to riff it, and he riffed it very, very badly. Um, I hope if I had to riff it, I wouldn't riff it quite that badly. Breaking news, fast happening, terror man <laughs> arrested. <laughs> very it was, good. It was just like you know when your id is at the wheel, so you're just saying words. It's like fast happening, terror man, go. And to be fair, we all understood what he meant. I do want to get some brief comment from you actually on the terror man. Um, because he didn't make it further than Chiswick. Now, to me, that, you know, on Friday's show, me and Aaron discussed this at length. I was saying there's sort of two options. One, this guy is, a, you know, an asset working with the Iranian security services. And the reason he was able to escape this prison against all odds is because he had a really vast criminal network essentially behind him. And that would suggest that as well as having a plan to leave the prison, he would also have a plan to leave the country within about 12 hours. The other option was that he was just a chancer who wanted to be famous, somewhat deluded, maybe had sent a few emails to the Iranian security establishment, a bit like when Paul Mason emailed that MI5 person because he thought, I've got information for you, and the MI5 person didn't really care. Um, and he's just a bit of a chancer, got a bit lucky. That would suggest he was still not too far from the prison. Does this probably mean we can assume that it was the latter of those, that he was a bit of a chancer and, and not necessarily a, a fully paid up agent for a foreign state? It sort of puts him in the maybe he's just some guy category. I mean, on Friday morning, I was doing BBC Radio 5 Live along with a former news editor for Sky News. A guy from Sky News, he had it in his head what the story was. He was like, there was inside help. London's crawling with Iranian assets. You know, he might be out of the country by now. And I was listening to all of that. And I was like, yeah, no, that is, that is one possibility. But another is that he's just some kid who could also take advantage of the fact that it's not a particularly well-run prison, it's understaffed, it's overcrowded, clearly cultivated, trusting relationships with, you know, decision makers within the prison who would, you know, determine whether or not he's working in the kitchens or he's under, you know, a, a lot more tighter security. And we just don't know. You know, we just don't know. All we have is that he's a terror suspect who managed to escape from prison. So it's one of those things where, like, I find it quite funny because you interact with journalists sometimes and when you say, hmm, I think that this might have been what happened, they'll be like, well, you can only say what you can prove. You can't prove that. So anything which runs counter to establishment narratives, like can't prove that, can't say it. But when it's something which activates, I think, what some of their 
um, political beliefs are, their sense of what constitutes a threat, where threats come from, then suddenly there's a very low burden of proof. You just have to be like, London's crawling with Iranian agents, must be one of them, job done. 